Tuesday. I hope you're having a good second day of the work week. And here it is Tuesday, and we will continue our look at the last 14 chapters of Genesis and lessons revealed in the life of, life of Joseph. The results of what we looked at yesterday is seen today in our devotion. Most of us know that Joe ends up in the pit that leads him as he goes to Egypt as a slave. He ended up in a pit. And we talked yesterday about hate being a strong motivator. Hate motivated his brothers to throw him into the pit. Now, there was one, Reuben, and I want us to kind of get this today. Reuben didn't want to kill him. He's the one that talked him into selling him into slavery because he was going to go back and get Joseph and take him home. You know, when hate rules the mob and we go along with it, we get in trouble. We see this all the time, whether it be in demonstrations that are happening where people's businesses are burned and, and people are beat up and hurt, or whether it be in an attack on our White House. Hate is a horrible, horrible motivator in violence. And it leads us to do things that are stupid and do things we shouldn't do. And so we see the lessons revealed to Joseph as his brothers hate him so much, they try to get rid of him. They even want to kill him. But Reuben stops that. The results of what we looked at yesterday, we're looking at going to go a little bit further in today. My beloved, we must face the fact that life is very, very unpredictable. You never know what the end of the day will bring. When he went out to check his brothers and to bring back a report and see how they were doing, he never for one moment thought he would end up in the pit. How many of us start out the day thinking everything is going to go normal and before the day ends, we're in the hospital or somebody we love is in the hospital or death has encroached upon our time on this earth. Joseph is sent out to help his brothers in the family business. And I say that kind of with tongue in cheek to help his brothers. Here's what we see. And Joseph and Israel, now I think that's kind of cool. He doesn't use Jacob. The word of God interchanges here. Israel with Jacob. It's the same person. But remember, we talked about that a while back, about how he had wrestled with God, and Jacob had had his name to turn to Israel, changed to Israel. Israel said, or Jacob said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Go, and I will send you to them. And he said to him, I will go. Do not miss the truth that God has a plan, even when the plan is not made apparent to us. I wonder when that young man started out to go find his brothers, if he ever for a moment thought his day would end the way that it would, or his days, or his journey would end up in a pit. God's plan for us is not always apparent. And you know, if sitting in the bottom of that pit, I wondered if he thought to himself, is this God's plan? I had a dream where they were bound down to me. Now they're throwing me into a pit. God, how's that going to work out? How's that working out, God? This is not how I envisioned it in my arrogance. You know, I think Joseph had to go to the pit to get rid of his arrogance. Sometimes God takes us to the pit to get rid of our arrogance. Let us not miss the fact that Joseph can't find his brothers and wanders around looking for them. Now, I think it's kind of cool, and I want us to see this, and I want us to be a lesson today. Sometimes God allows us to wander around. Just seems like there was no uh, place that he was... Uh, Getting anywhere just seemed like time was kind of standing still as he wandered around looking for his brothers. And it's got to be kind of scary out in the middle of the desert looking for your brothers. Your dad gives you an assignment. And he says, go find your brothers. You can't find them. You can't go back and tell him that you uh, couldn't find them. So you got to look for them and you got to look for them. Maybe you're looking for something in your life now. Maybe you're wandering and it's not God's timing yet. Are you wandering around just kind of looking for what God's got for you? Give him time. He's working out a plan. Now, Genesis 37, 15 through 17. Here we go. Remember, Israel sent Joseph out, and he was wandering around. And here's what the, we're told in his wandering. And a man found him. I think that's kind of cool. God sent somebody to him. God's going to send somebody to you. God sends somebody to me when we need him. And behold, he was wandering in the field, 
And the man said to him, What are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing the flock. Then the man said, They have moved from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dotham. He went and found his brothers in Dotham, but he didn't get what he bargained on, did he? I want you to see the pattern here. He was wandering. God sent a man to find him. God had a plan. It may seem to us that we're not getting much done in our looking and wandering state of life today, but God's got a plan for you. That seems to be the way in COVID, doesn't it? Sometimes we're put on hold. Maybe you think you're put on hold. You know what? God's using you right where you're at right now. You may not see it. You may not know it. You may think you're wandering around. But God's got a direction, and God's sending people to you you need to touch. God is working out the details so all will work for his glory. You may not think God's accomplishing much or you're accomplishing much, but God's got some plan going on. Look for, look for the people God's sending to help you. Look for the person God is sending to communicate to you his will. He's got a plan. We'll see that tomorrow. Your gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your plan. Thank you, Lord, for the times of wandering, and thank you for the people that come and, and you allowed to intervene in our lives to give us direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.